Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, Rough Riders are one of the coolest things in the Imperial Guard, and that extends to any sort of grimdark science fiction setting where there's guns and tanks and aliens, and then these nutters with horses. I love them. They are cool no matter what game you're playing. Now, this fellow wasn't around in front of me. He is from Victoria Miniatures. Now, if you recall the name Victoria Lamb, she's a Golden Demon winner, and a sculptor with a massive company knocking out some really cool miniatures. Now, these Rough Riders have just come out. Uh, they've been sent out to Kickstarter backers, but keep an eye on the website because they'll be available for physical purchase as well. Um, I, of course, have the STLs because I couldn't help myself. So what I'm gonna show you today is a nice quick method uh, for getting these guys on the table. It will adapt to pretty much any mounted infantry that you wanna be painting and all of the paints will be listed in the description below. So, let's get started. So, once your miniature is all cleaned up and assembled, first thing to do, of course, is to prime him. Now, I've used here Zandri Dust, because I want a medium brown sort of color for pretty much everything I'm going to be doing. The exception to this would be if I was going to be painting a white horse. Um, I have painted a white horse on the channel before, and I do recommend then start from a much lighter primer. You could also use a grey here. Um, I'm using Xandri Dust because I am looking for a more natural brownish tone to everything, so it's going to be ideal, but you can start from just about anything. Now I'm looking at painting something like a dun or a buckskin colour horse. Um, I would suggest, you know, there are other videos where I've painted different colour horses, and the advice there will still be perfectly reasonable. What I'm starting from is Tau Light Ochre. And you'll see as this goes on, I'm going to need to apply a second coat. And when it comes to thinning out your paints, um, quite regularly you'll hear advice like thin it down to a milky consistency. That's not always going to be the best answer because some colors just cover differently. Some paint manufacturers, they are, you know, they have a different consistency. Thinning everything down to a universal milky consistency, well, one size doesn't necessarily fit all, let's say. Uh, now, if I thinned this down any more than it is, I'd be doing 12 bleeding coats, and I don't have the patience for that. What I'm going to do instead is probably two, maybe three across his butt. What I'm using to apply this is actually an old shade brush. Something large and nice and soft will serve you well here. So, away I go. With miniatures this sort of size, it can be a little bit daunting, but we're going to break it down nice and simple. Just start from the bottom, same as you usually would. Now there is one coat. It's not looking too bad, but we've got some of the primer still showing through. So once that first coat is thoroughly dry, on goes our second. And you'll see, that's really all we need. So looking at ways to layer up from the bottom, the next one is going to be his blanket here. Now I'm going to paint this in wolf grey from the Army Painter because my rust grey has gone bonk. So <laughs> it's lasted about eight years and finally it is gone. So I don't mind too much. But you see, I'm still at a stage where I can be quite messy and that's going to be important getting behind some of his gear here. Now wolf grey does have a wonderful woolen sort of color to it, which I quite like. What I'm going to go to now, this is flat brown from Vallejo. And I'm going to paint in most of the leather details. So I'm going to struggle a little bit to get in behind him here and get to his saddle. Uh, now flat brown, this is quite close to something like uh, Katachan Flesh. I'm using it mostly because the coverage on these Vallejo colors is a little bit better than the uh, Citadel equivalents, and I'm not too worried about that richer, glossier finish that they tend to have. So this is the part that's probably going to take the longest. Uh, all the same, it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. So buckle up and get painting your leather. Now you might correctly point out there is quite a bit of leather left on the rider himself. Now I haven't painted that yet because I want to do his uniform first, and it is still going to be easier to paint the horse's leather, then his uniform, then layer back on some more flat brown. So. The timing on this is a little bit funny. Haha, -ha, but we'll make it work. 
Now, before painting in his uniform, I'm going to paint in his face with tanned flesh. Now we're going to use Rakarth flesh for a couple of things. First, the tiny glimpse of his tunic that's around his neck. It's quite difficult to show you here on the camera, but I'm going to blast that with some of this. Uh, coincidentally, if you are painting any of the Van Diemen's World devils and they aren't wearing a tunic, you know, you're painting the regular infantry, Rakarth flesh for their shirts will do the job. I'm also going to use this to paint in the reins. Now it did occur to me at the same time to paint in the rope using the same color. Um, I might touch that in with something different later, but that's going to make a much better base coat. And when it comes to his uniform, I'm going to start with Deathworld Forest. Uh, but if you want it, now here's that dreaded word again, reality. In reality, since we are so strongly borrowing from the Australian light horse here, uh, the trousers that these guys are wearing would quite commonly have been a slightly lighter green because the army issue tunics and the uh, riding trousers weren't ordinarily the same material. They were quite close in color, and that's why, as I'm going to do here, if you want to just paint them the same green, it won't matter. Uh, but if you did want to, you know, point to that on the tabletop and go, hey, hey, look at this attention to detail. Uh, something like Death Guard Green would be a good choice for his trousers, but his whole uniform, including his hat, I'm going to paint in Death World Forest. Now, Death World Forest is definitely a two coats kind of green, uh, but it is a really nice sort of generic army man color. Uh, also works super well for a one paint solution for Canadian battle dress from World War II, if you ever need that for some reason. What I'm going to do now is use Mechanicus Standard Grey, and I'm going to paint in the two, uh, what do you call them, saddle blankets that he's got. Uh, theoretically, this can be any color you want. I just want to use some grey on here. Now we're going to turn to one of my favorite Vallejo colors. This is German Grey. Now, if you want a Citadel alternative to this, it's basically Corvus Black, uh, but the coverage on it, as you'll see, is just much better. Um, what I'm going to use this for is anything that would be black, uh, because you'll find that in reality, grubby grubby word, uh, real black is actually very uncommon. You don't tend to see it in most situations. So by using a blue black like this, uh, you've actually got a little bit that you can do with some shade and highlight to make it look a bit more lifelike. So not only am I going to paint the points on the horse, which would be black, uh, but areas like his boots, his rifle, all the bits that I want to be black are going to get a dose of this now, and uh, it's going to make quite a difference. Now, do you remember me saying that we'd go back to flat brown? Because here it is again, and we're going to start painting in the leather details on the rider. Now these gaiters, you could paint them pretty much anything you wanted. Steel Legion Drab, if you fancy like a soft fabric cover here. But I am going with leather. Now there's a, there's a lot of equipment there. I'd recommend that if you have got the guys that have the pouches um, or the slung bags over their sides, maybe doing those in Rakarth Flesh would look a little bit more interesting. Mostly I've stuck to flat brown, that leather color, so that there isn't a huge difference of colors everywhere all over the miniature. It'll get very busy quite quickly. But I do want to do something different for his gloves. So here I have XV88, and uh, this is a nice sort of buckskin color, which is going to look great on these. Now we're going to lay down the armor color. I'm going to use the same on both the horse and the man because eh, it looks cool. And I'm going to use Castellan Green for this. So up on his shoulder pads, the little roundels in the center of his knee pads, and the bits on the horse. Away we go. Castellan Green does cover quite well, but especially on these big flatter areas, you may find a second coat is necessary. Now it's just occurred to me that I probably should have done this step before applying the armor color, because what we're going to do is actually to dry brush all of the soft gear on this miniature, which of course includes the horse. What I have is some Tyrant Skull and one of my grubby, scrunkly old brushes, and uh, I am leaving 
almost nothing behind when I'm dry brushing this, all right? It is important that you are as sparing with this at first as you can be, because when you are applying Tyrant Skull like this, what you'll find is that if you're very careful, you'll still get some of the original color underneath show through your little dry brush. So even along the tail here, very lightly, like I am barely touching the miniature here, but as I go over the area a few times, I get a little bit of highlight on the texture of the fur, or well, the hair I suppose it is really, isn't it? And that's going to be true across all of the soft bits. So the leather, the horse, the blanket, the guy, everything gets a careful, careful dry brush of this tyrant skull. You'll probably find you need to go back and uh, load up your brush a couple of times as you do this. But each time that you do, slow down, dry brush your thumb, your base. Again, just test how much you're leaving behind, because you do not want to overdo this stage. Now it will take a couple of passes to build up that color, particularly on the horse itself. It's a really easy way to get a little bit more volume into the musculature there. Now see along some of the leather parts, that's quite extreme, but don't worry, we are going to shade this and it's going to bring it all down quite nicely. So as a last couple of tidy up stages, what we'll do is the metallics. Now I have here Retributor Armor, and what I'm going to do is the pommel on his sword, and all of the little brass buttons on his gear. You'll see very quickly how this tidies up the uh, the look. It is a little bit time consuming though, because my goodness, these style of uniforms do tend to have a lot of little buttons. And if you thought that bit was fun, you're gonna love this, because after the brass buttons, we're doing all of the buckles. For this, I'm using lead belcher. So any little bits of exposed metal at this point, well, his stirrups and what have you, parts of his gun. Oh boy, here we go. There is quite a few little buckly bits on this dude. So take your time, go back in for some fresh paint occasionally and paint in with lead belcher. So here we go, moment of truth. What I have is my little mixed up bottle. This is half and half Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium. Now I add the medium because I want to thin down the color. First of all, I don't want it to be as intense when it goes on. And I also prefer the flow property of Lamian medium versus thinning this down with something like contrast medium. Um, I want it to spread around rather than sticking like contrast tends to. So I'm going to load up a huge brush and I tend to find it's important because if you are not adding enough shade at a time, what you're going to do is just smear and drag around not enough, and that's part of where you get really awful streaky shades from. Better to apply too much and then move it around while it's wet. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just bucket this stuff on, and then once it's had a couple of seconds to settle, I can start shifting it around with my brush. Now you'll see, oh my goodness, like I said, moment of truth. <laughs> I'm going to really work it in everywhere, make sure I'm getting up under his arms and what have you. But yeah, once it's had a few seconds to settle, I can move it around, stop it pooling on big flat areas, that sort of thing. Now once I've finished applying it, it's going to need some time to dry. Now I'm going to leave it for about 30 minutes, somewhere nice and sunny. We'll come back and have a look at what that looks like, and he'll be almost finished if this works. <laughs> a lot of if coming off this plan. Now while that isn't completely dry, I really hope that demonstrates, you know, just a quick dry brush and a shade over the top will bring all of that together. It's nice and easy. Obviously it's not as precise or as pretty as going in and highlighting everything, you know, manually, shall we say, uh, but it's easy and it's quick, which I like. So speaking of quick, I am going to pop a link in the description to how I am going to paint his face right now, uh, because I kind of got to finish this, and I've done faces a few times before. So at the link down there, skip ahead to the 11.05 mark if it isn't queued up properly. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to save a bit of time by doing this off screen. 
And then the last thing I'm going to do is grab some steel. Now this is one of the Vallejo model air color paints. I'd recommend that Stormhost Silver is pretty close. Don't worry if you can't get your hands on this. I just like how it comes off the brush. What I'm going to do is just ding very tiny little scratches and marks along the edge of some of the, uh, the metallic armor. Uh, just to give it a little bit more visual interest from a distance. And once I'm finished with this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit it with a matte varnish, pop his base on, and as always, the recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at this horse once he is all finished. And so there at last, our Rough Rider is complete, and I've had a bunch of fun painting him. I say it every time, but I love painting cavalry once they're finished. This is very much in the realm of it's not finished until the very last brush stroke. Uh, honestly, it's kind of a mess when you get started, but this is one of those methods where you really just got to trust the process and go all the way through. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now, Without your support, folks, I would not still be doing this, so thank you again. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.